Hey, this is Warren Redlick. I am here with Juan and Ricardo. Juan and Ricardo have startup have started up a company or a, 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 at least a business that is building off large language models, particularly related to image generation. Uh, I think in particular, in this case, stable diffusion, but it's related to my mid journey. It's related to Dolly. And you could probably relate this. And we're going to talk a little about chat GPT later in the, in the, in the interview, in the conversation. Uh, before I dive into that, I'd like to ask you both to introduce yourselves. Who wants to go first? Uh, actually, I can go first. Um, I'm currently a CTO of a small startup based in Australia. It's about all this stuff on blockchain. Uh, I wanted to, to say right now that we are using Dolly event, which is a cool feature called Morph, where you take this all, all these, what we call them um, artifacts that are basically, basically collectibles between different games. And you can use this amazing technology to create your own art from an amazing art created by a professional artist. And what I really like about this is like, it's a merge between AI and the real artists that it's a constant fight at this moment. And I don't know, it's like, it's, it's where, where we started. It's like the base base idea. And we just have, we, we have been working this uh, basically the whole week. Um, and here, here we are. Um, Ricardo, are you in Australia right now? You know, I'm from Mexico. Actually, uh, right now I at, at Mexico, but the story is there, and well, I'm the CTO there remotely, and we just attended to uh, an amazing conference on UK talking all about this. Cool. Okay. And then uh, Juan, would you please introduce yourself? I think you're a lot closer to me. Yeah. So I'm Juan. I'm a software engineer. Uh, moved to Florida, Jacksonville in 2015. Uh, finished high school here. Went to college here in UCF. I stick around in the area. I currently live in North Orlando, a condo. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I'm a senior software engineer at a Fortune 500 company, and I'm my startup. That's it. Okay, and Juan is planning on coming down and visiting me sometime because we're only about an hour apart. He's going to come down uh, maybe next month, and we're going to go uh, watch a rocket launch together, and then go for an FSD beta ride. So um, yeah. unfortunately, unfortunately, That's Ricardo's so not going to make that trip. So maybe well, I, I could see. try. I could try, man. Okay. So <laughs> your company, you you mentioned Dolly in the in the conversation in your intro, Ricardo. So there's this group of of apps or startups or whatever you want to call it. OpenAI has Chat GPT. There's Stable Diffusion. There's Mid Journey. There's Dolly. Um, and actually, the, the image behind me I generated with Stable Diffusion, it's mm. a pod car uh, with no doors or windows on a country road at sunset was the prompt. And it generated um, these images. And there were two other images that it generated. And I decided to make this my Zoom background because I'm starting up a company to make pod cars. We'll see if this goes anywhere. So, Ricardo, do you want to tell us what's this startup that you guys are working on? It has something to do with Stable Diffusion. Can you tell the audience what you're doing? Yeah, well, the the, the main idea idea well first of all i want to say that this idea was like a crazy dream like we just started one day saying like let's do something cool and we just started uh, dropping code into the idea and like that's the the first idea and then we started to find like a product fit well we we don't have it obviously because i mean it's a startup but the the idea is to create this avatars where like people can say can can think on how they imagine they are. Like for example, if I love the space, I love death, I love whatever. You can imagine yourself like an astronaut, and in some way try to generate an, an avatar about that. And we we are also planning to adapt features where you can add this kind of personalization to them, and not not only what AI can do. So that's right. like the main idea. Uh, I think one can relate a lot of this because he he also dream all this with me yeah well what i mean by avatars like all these profile pics we are also planning to try to to seek um i, I don't know like a um like a combination of all these artifacts like i already talked about the, the business i currently work like where you can use all these collectibles across games we, we also have like a great idea where, where you can create your online identity and move that across all the internet or all the games. Like, well, not when people say metaverse, but I think that's like a word that it's not that cool, but you can imagine like using your idea across all your apps and right. not only talking about blockchain and that stuff that might be a little bit complicated, but in this case it's really like who you are or 
who you feel you you want to be. All right. So the, the current thing that you're working on, though, is I've got a picture of myself and I want to make a cool version of it. And I log into your software and submit that picture and give you some context of what I want my my avatar to look like. And yeah, then, exactly. And then your app accesses stable diffusion and generates 10 images or what, what, tell, go ahead. Go ahead, Juan. Tell us what it does. So my stronghold is, uh, my forte is uh, infrastructure. Uh, so it's all self-hosted. We have our own uh, GP, uh, GPU uh, virtual machines in the cloud. So you're, sorry. So yeah, you're, it runs stable. It runs the full stable diffusion model. It takes 20 gigs of VRAM. Oh, so you're not logging into stable diffusion. You have your own iteration. You have your own version of stable diffusion. Fork. Model. It's a fork. Yeah. Okay, so, so you're not tapping in, you're not running through an API into their software. You've created your own variant yeah. of it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. So do you have I want to pay them a you have to, Hold on, do you have to pay them a license? Is it sort of freeware? What's the idea there? MIT. I don't it's know what MIT that means. License, so free. It's free. MIT license means free. Okay. Uh, so I want to clarify further. The way it actually works on the back end is that you actually tell the model, hey, this is Warren Redlick. These are 20 photos of Warren Redlick's face. This is what he looks like full full body. This is what he looks like from behind. This is what he looks like with glasses. Uh, now, use that information. And uh, so I don't know if you're familiar with how transformer models work. Uh, basically, transformer, it's a neural network uh, architecture that uh, takes Whatever input, uh, say a sentence uh, or an image, which is a string of bytes, right? At the end of the day, uh, and it just turns it into some sort of token. So the same way we, for the word uh, she or they, we we use some tokens, S S H E and T H E Y. In the same way, you're telling the model that this is whatever and tokenizes and represented as that in the data set. And so what it does is that it hashes it and it represents it, represents it as a number. Then you can use the reverse of that number to get it get a prompt to it. So that's how the system works. So you say we're in Red Lake as a token and then we're in the Red Lake running at the park in Central Park, New York City, 4K ultra realistic and it will give you Warren Red Lake doing that. That's okay. how it works. And, and, and it takes his input that text and 20 images of me. Yeah. Uh, you can actually do it with eight, eight, but the more, the better. Right. And so my understanding and, I'm, and my understanding is limited is a lot of these large language models have a large data set that they're using to start with and they get trained on that large data set. So are you using the same data set that Stable Diffusion uses? Do you have your own data set? Is my 20 images the data set that you're using? How do you make that work? So we are forked from main Stable Diffusion plus all the tokens that we add. So you, me, Richie, whatever. So so it's all of their data plus? Plus, yeah. Although you're a fork, if you forked at some point, they might have added some new data that you don't have access to? Yeah, we can rebase at some point, but yeah. Okay, so so and so let's talk about your your business plan. Okay, so you've got this business where you can generate an avatar for me, or how like when I how does this work? I pay you guys how much money, and what do I get? Actually, we are playing like three different plans right now. Um, we are thinking this on depending who you are. Like for example, if you 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 only want like an image for. I don't know, for your Facebook, for your Twitter, whatever. Uh, it costs about $3 and it will generate 10 different images and you can pick whatever you, um, the, the one you like the most. And obviously we have two other packages with higher resolution, with uh, cloud storage, because maybe you want to save them for later because for example, the biggest package includes like more than 100 um, AI photos generated. Uh, also, we're planning to create the, the online studio. I mentioned it before, which is kind of editor where, where you can choose for a custom background, maybe change, I don't know, like a really fast Photoshop, but online. Obviously not with all the features of Photoshop, but something really simple where you can add that kind of personalization to it. Yeah. I want to add, you, you, can, you can think of uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA image AI, uh, that type of dashboard where you can paint and tell it, I want to replace this for something else. That's the idea later. So 
you've you've given me like comments. you've given me like the base user is like a three dollar person who just wants a cool image for their which is sounds sort of like what lens is it is a company called lenza there's some company that generating like avatar yeah. images for people not to say that it's the same but they're doing something yeah. vaguely like that who are the higher end users that would want something more and, and how much would they pay as again as i said uh you can see my linkedin uh actually i think it got blocked so whatever uh, <laughs> I, I looked at your LinkedIn oh, while we LinkedIn. were talking earlier, and I don't see I don't see what you're talking about. So yeah, so look at my Twitter, my profile picture on Twitter. That's okay. something that a professional will get. Okay. You want a professional photo shoot without having to put anything else besides pajamas on, right? So that's uh, that's that product, and it will be like forty forty dollars a month or something, something insane. We haven't figured out yet. Okay, and so you're I I, I might be able to paste this into the video later when I edit. Your Im it's basically an image of you basically in a space helmet. And like you're in a space suit. Yeah. It's your, it's your face. And on my other Twitter, yeah, I have, I, have, I can share uh, all the resources with you, but it's pretty good. Again, am I, I can share my, can I share my screen one? Yeah, go ahead. So let me talk to you, Ricardo. Ricardo, so, so who is the high end user? What are they using this for and how much are they paying? Well, the highest package right now is planning to cost about between 12 or $15. Uh, we haven't figured out that yet. But it's well, more sorry, than one. Twelve dollars to fifteen dollars. Yeah. Okay. And and what 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 is the what is the motivation of that user? Why do they want to use this? What are they using it for? It, yeah, as I said, it's like the kind of personalization personalization you can get, like changing background, maybe the coloring, maybe I don't know, adding to you some, I don't know, gadgets or accessories to your your face or whatever you you want to to create. Or, or even the the high res like that's a plus because obviously creating a bigger image takes more storage, more more resources in general. So that's another thing. Um, also we are planning, but this is more in, in the long term because it's obviously more work, more, more difficult. It's not something we can do like in, maybe not even in one or two months. But it's getting different kind of models. For example, pixel art, uh, anime, or different styles of art that but you it, can get on that bigger package. But it still sounds like it's really sort of like an individual consumer rather than like a business. Like, a, Yeah, yeah. So let me clarify. For that, that's, those are the consumer plans. Just Fix is the consumer plans. There's, there's going to be a pro version, which is for prosumers, which starts probably at 20 and up to 79 a month. Oh, per month? Uh, but yeah. So sorry, yeah. It, was the money that you mentioned, the $3 or the 12 to $15, is that a one-shot thing to generate images or is that a That's a general, the general consumer, it's uh, per month. Okay, but why Why would I, why would I want this for more than one shot? Oh, because no, I no. want to, gen I want to change my avatar occasionally. Like I might want to change my avatar two or three times a month. Oh, no, why not? Okay. And, and I don't even know Lenza's business model. How does Lenza work? Uh, they give you a hundred for fifteen dollars a month. Uh, it's pretty expensive. Okay. It's slow and bad. Bad outputs. So, okay. So let's talk about that. I I'm not even familiar with Lenza. I know I have friends who have used it and they've generated images of themselves. And like I personally like I I like seeing people as they are. I'm not into this like avatar world, but I'm an old I'm old school. Um, is is Lenza sort of like the main competition, or are they the ones that have the most attention right now? Who else is out there doing something like this, vaguely like this, and and how do they operate, and why are you different? I can take this. Uh, our main competitor right now is Photoshoot. Photoshoot. Photoshoot.co, I, I believe. Okay. And they do something similar. What do they do? Stable diffusion on demand too, but uh, theirs uh, starts at twelve or six dollars, something like that. And it takes like twenty minutes. Hours is RT. Okay. So what do you what are you going to show us here? Uh, so I posted this uh thread on how this whole technology works. This is one output I got from it. In case you're interested. Uh, so I'll link this to you so you can go through it later and uh, post it and uh, show in the video. Uh, here's playing oh, the output. It's being recorded right now. People are seeing it. Great. So here, explain how it works. Uh, basically, we so stable diffusion give us a noisy output, a small, uh, a low pixel quantity output of two five six, but uh, by two five six or five twelve, five five twelve. If we do more than that, our model takes too long to generate images, and we go bankrupt. 
Uh, so 256 by 256 is important. And then we just upscale it using a, a, a model uh, that I explained over here. So okay, hang on, hang on. Just some of the users might not understand what you mean by this. 256 by 256 pixels, pixels is a low resolution image. Uh, yeah. What people are looking at on the screen right now is 720p, which is 1280 by 720. So that what you're seeing on uh, in this conversation right now is much higher resolution than 256 by 256. Exactly. And, and like a really good like 4K image would be, I think, 21... 56 by 1280 or something like that or by 19 something something like that something like, like that 2500 no, by like that. by 2500 by 1800 no, I, I think it's no 4k is 4096 by 2160 if i'm not mistaken okay something like that at, at any rate point is that we we need to move fast because we need to serve a lot of people uh, a parallel. So we need to get a good enough output that we can upscale sort of what nvidia does with their gaming software where they generate frames Sort of the same idea. It uses the same part of the GPU, actually, the same part of the CUDA architecture, uh, which is cool because we get uh, free performance upgrades as drivers come out. Uh, but yeah, uh, so here uh, I say that some outputs are good, some are better than others. It's all about prompting it to give you their artistic results you're looking for. And uh, so here's this. Much. Yeah, what what hardware are you running? What is what is this running on? Is this running on like? A one GPU PC or one what? GPU. Mm. So, is there a theory that you would expand to operate this on something with like a hundred GPUs? And yeah, what, the, what's, what's the hard? What's the vision for the future in terms of hardware? Well, sorry, let's start. Let's take a step back. What exactly is this running on now? Yeah, I can tell I you that, and Rich, you can take the second part. Okay. <laughs> Right. So currently we're running on a Bolter uh, Cloud instance and NVIDIA A100, 60 gigs of RAM and uh, eight cores. Okay, and I'm sorry. Have... So you're running in some sort of cloud service? Yeah. Yeah. What's the name of the cloud service? Vulture. Vulture. Okay. And is that, that's not Amazon AWS. That's not Google. It's some no, separate no, no. Cloud, that's, cloud system. Uh, that's crazy expensive. No, no, no. We don't do that. Okay. And so in the future, uh, would, you, would, you, would you continue running in a cloud service or would you end up cre building your own hardware? Both. Well, obviously, you can take it from here, but yeah. Yeah, obviously in the long running, it's cheaper for any kind of business when they are really big to just create their own data centers, if that's what you meant. But obviously when you start cloud, it's easier. Uh, it's managed, well, most of it. And it's 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 cheaper also. Uh, the idea is to make some kind of edge network I mean, some kind of because it's not it's not something you can replicate really easy, but it's like create this kind of servers on demand. So, for example, if you're here at America or you're at Europe or even in Asia, you have an instance yeah. really near to you, and everything is faster. Obviously, we we're planning on edge server serverless network, so you can communicate between all these servers, and your data, like all these not intensive stuff, is really fast and really near to you. And well, that's basically that's basically like the big picture. I mean, if you want me to go into detail, well, like for example, which cloud provider, it's a little bit hard to no, no, no. Right I, now. The question, I, I mean, I'm guessing right now you don't have a lot of demand, you don't have a lot of users, so you don't need a <laughs> yeah. lot of high-end mm -hmm. resources. What's the what do you let's suppose you get like a thousand users, or or um, how much how much is that going to cost? We can take a thousand right now. Okay, so what's the What's your vision in the short term? Like right now it's January 31st, let's say, and I think you're you're sort of like in a soft open right now. You're you're just starting to run this thing for, for customers. Um, let's say we're, we hit the end of June. So we're five months from now. Where are you hoping you're going to be in terms of the number of people using this and how much revenue it generates and how much it's going to cost you to operate this service? Um, so let me, let me start with how much we're paying right now we are paying uh a thousand dollars a month for the cloud instance okay uh that's our cost basis and that's about it everything else it's uh infrastructure it's maybe five hundred dollars as it scales up we might have to pay some bandwidth maybe a thousand dollars a month from here to june maybe five thousand because we are probably gonna get the dust uh so <laughs> So if you have a thousand customers paying an average of ten dollars a month, that's ten thousand dollars a month. Exactly, and our margins are about a third. 
Okay. Um, and then, you know, presumably the goal is to scale up as you start scaling up with the cloud service. Does the, does the cost per use go down as you use more? I haven't tested what a theoretical uh, maximum per instance. Of yeah, we, we haven't this, we haven't done like all, all this all that research. But as I said, like replicating all these GPUs across the globe might, might help with also these numbers. Because for example, if you have I just say a number like one thousand per continent, you have like one GPU per continent. So each continent is paying for it for. Yeah, it's paying for its usage. And I mean, I mean, like the infrastructure, the basic API and the communication between the services, it, that's that's cheaper in comparison because we are planning to go serverless with that. And even maybe using the the new database from Cloudflare, which is really cheap compared for, for it's example. Really cheap. Maybe it's using- edge. It's snappy. Yeah, it's, it's cheaper than, for example, using a complex technology like Cassandra or, well, I don't think Cassandra fits for this, but just to say something complex, maybe MongoDB or something like that, it's cheaper to- I definitely, to do that I definitely right. think that Mongo, Mongo is amazing for this uh, type of yeah. uh, project. Yeah, uh, Mongo is it's but... a, a really good database for this, but I mean, the new database from Cloudflare could kill it. I mean, it's still in alpha, but yeah. we could even try to give it a shot. And, and obviously, I, I want to add into this, like maybe it's not that related, but we feel like the UX and the UI for the user is really important. We, we really think that the customer needs to feel the, like all this is like an amazing tool. Like for example, you get a new iPhone and uh, the iPhone it's, I mean, just inboxing is an experience. We this want works. To, yeah, we want to do something similar. And for example, Apple getting rid of the passwords and usernames, something we feel it's like the, the the go it's like the correct way to do and we're even planning to do like just give us your email and we handle everything else for you like your email your photos and what do you want us to generate for you so how how big do you feel like this market is that you know how many people ultimately will use software like this to generate images in themselves is this like millions of people is it tens or hundreds of millions of people or more What's the what's the uh, what's, the, what's the, the the total addressable market is it's, one of these, it's, like Wall Street? Are, so I can I can give you my optimistic numbers and the Tom it's about eight billion people. Eight, in other words, everyone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, but there, okay, so there's here's a little bit of reality. everyone number, on Earth. Number one, everyone over the age of like seventy, well, almost oh, almost uh, no one over the age of seventy is going to use this. Probably fun. 14 to 50 or 60, maybe? Depends on how it, how well it does. So, I mean, it's, it's certainly more than a billion people, I think, would be fair. I, I think yeah. that's not... I mean, there's a, there's, a chunk, crazy revenue. there's a chunk of people who are very, very poor who would not spend 30 cents for anything like this, right? Um, that's why we are planning to do some free uh, outputs, but you cannot share them. No, no, but I'm just saying, like, like there's... there's a, there's, you know, a large part, large portion of the population of Africa and India cannot afford, oh. would not spend money on this. But, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of wealthy people in the United States and Europe and even large swaths of Latin America and um, and China who can afford this. I mean, given like the correct shut up on, on the idea, you need to think like all these kind of gamers or people who live on the internet likes to have like, uh, like they're in some way... Some of them, are, they are introverts. So like the way they see themselves is like, for example, the astronaut, uh, one generates for, for himself on Twitter. All, all these people like to have like this avatar where they imagine what they are. I know, like a knight, or an astronaut, uh, I don't so know, whatever. People, so people are very active in, in online activities, which is yeah. probably hundreds of millions of people, if not more than a billion people already. Yeah. yeah. And one, one, it's what a great market. My point of this, like, you need to think then the big number of these people is, and maybe we can get the subscription model working where they can get different avatars on how they feel they are in each yeah, month. Maybe. So you have a light version of you changing time to time. But where, where, where I'm going maybe. with this is, where I'm going with this is if the total addressable market is a billion people and you only get one tenth of 1% of the market, right? That's a million customers. Like a, yeah. 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 What yeah, I'm yeah. saying, what I'm saying, uh, Warren, is that uh, maybe we can do some 
targeted pricing for, for different regions, so like a dollar or something. And again, we plan on doing on doing the five free outputs for you to play with. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter where on earth you are, you can just get them. Like just upload a photo yourself as long as you have a phone and an internet connection, you should be able to get it. No, but I'm just running the math. If you had a million customers paying ten dollars a month, then you'd be doing okay. What yeah. yeah. I mean, and then and yeah. if a, if a third of the revenue is margin, if a third of the revenue is profit, so that's ten million dollars a month, one hundred twenty million dollars a year, you'd have forty million dollars in gross profit. That would be a good uh, business. Yeah, right. for example, uh, I did like a quick Google right now. It's, there are like three billion of active video video gamers. Um, three billion. About three, yeah, about active video yeah. gamers where what, like they play all day. And, um, all the time. So just the one percent is about like thirty million, I think, if I'm correct. Right. I'm not sure. Right. That's so why you get really 30, big numbers. Yeah, thirty million, and you you just need to do the math for. It. Just imagine the the lowest package, which is three dollars. So you you need to multiply thirty All right. million for. So for I, I'm I'm buying That's this right. a little bit, and I would say, well, the problem is that typically when you have something like this, you end up with one dominant player. And one dominant player gets a huge market share. And what your real goal would be is to become the huge dominant player. Exactly. Um, yeah. And if you become the huge dominant player, then you're a billion dollar company. Well, or you get, or you, and I'm rich. Or you get bought out by, <laughs> well, if you honestly, if you're making $40 million a year in gross profit between the two of you, you're rich already anyway, right? But, <laughs> yeah. Well, and even depending <laughs> on where on the globe you are. I'm planning on IPO, to be honest. Planning on what? IPO. Right. Well, I think I think that you know, you have to get to a certain point in the business where you've you've got a, you've got a genuine you know number of customers and and um, you're paying your way and you're you're at least not losing too much money and you're growing fast and then you, then you're you're at that point where you can say okay you know can we make this a little bit profitable or how do we do an IPO or does somebody want to buy you out? I mean, I think those are a variety of options that are out there. I, I guess I, the yeah. question I have is. Is this something that would be commoditized and there'll be so many options that nobody will want to pay much for it? No. It is difficult mm -hmm. to get to get working properly. Well, yeah, even if that happens, you need to think like the user will go with the best experience you get. That's why I, I said that it's important to right. like, for three, example three dollars is not a lot of money. So if you're delivering me a quality experience, then I don't mind paying three bucks for it. Yeah, and, and even three bucks, like that's what we think right now it should be, but maybe we don't even get it. It could be cheaper economy scale. Yeah, it all, all depends on how we evolve because maybe I am saying like right now three dollars and maybe we, we may need to charge more, like maybe five. I don't know. But the point is like that's the plan, that's our mission. And I always say in software, like there's I mean there it's difficult to get to achieve things, but there are ways to do it always. Well, all, me, most of the time. Let me look at it a different way. I, I, I sign up and I generate, you know, whatever the basic package is. How much compute does that use? And how much does that compute cost? Uh, well, I, again, we, we are real time, Warren. And we are aiming of increasing the speed of the model to two frames per second uh, next month. So how many frames per second? Two frames per second. Eventually Three. 24 to do video, but yeah. Okay, but my point is that when I when I'm generate when I I realize that one individual is 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 not generating that much cost, but let's say a thousand people, you know, run this. At, run, how much does it cost you to serve a thousand people? What's what's, right, the so that, that, what's the what's the compute cost? Let's do a number. So uh, uh, let me do the hard numbers actually. So currently we're paying for the one Nvidia A100, which comes with eighty gigs of RAM, twelve CPUs, one twenty gigs of RAM. Uh, and, uh, and it's twenty four seven. Twenty four seven, but we pay per hour, so we can scale down and up. Okay, that part is important because we have software for, to automate that to optimize for costs. Right, but uh, but, but uh, assuming assuming twenty four seven, it'll be seventeen fifty a month, and that serves so about twenty gigs is the whole uh, stable diffusion model. And all the other uh, 60 gigs are available to serve uh, each token and training and stuff. But and it should take about a gig per token. But how many how many users will that serve over the course of a month? If you if you had let's suppose, let's suppose you had 
let's suppose you had an you're, you're not going to have an even number of users you're going to have a peak time and you're going to have a lull time but exactly. but you know optimistically how many users could you serve when you're paying 1750 a month for that that compute is that something where you could serve a thousand customers 10,000 customers uh, you know it's like how many let's how many customers an hour could you serve i'm trying to figure it out right now so about so it takes about as i said about 600 megs of vram per token once you have the big chunk of the model which is about 24 gigs it's about 600 gigs of VRAM, and there's a CPU spike that it takes for a little bit, and, and RAM usage to to compute a new token. But uh, let's call it let's call it 800 um, uh, megabytes of VRAM. So we're talking of those 60 gigs of VRAM that we have left, about 75 tokens uh, per second. And if we go to real time above two frames per second, we can do about 150. Okay, so a, a token uh, is one of my one of the images I've generated. Yeah. Or Okay, so and I'm going to generate for three dollars. I'm going to generate eight to eight tokens, or I'm going to generate twenty tokens. How many am I generating for three dollars, Richie? Uh, we're planning to to do be uh, an amount between ten and fifteen. Let's say ten. Okay, so let's say ten because it's an easy number to work with. Yep. Right. Yeah. So ten to it sounds to me like you can do eight users a second, or maybe you don't have the, the uh, room for that. Yeah, uh, we do. We do. We have a lot of room. One fifty gigs. Uh, so you, if you so can do eight it's... users a second, you could do an insane volume of customers at seventeen hundred and fifty dollars a month cost. Yeah, yeah, how much? To... How... Well, you need to to add like for example, if we, if we can serve uh, the eight users per second, you also need to think we can add like a queue system where where the user might need to wait five seconds. But I mean, five yeah. seconds is and, not like a. Well, I'm, you were saying you were amount. saying two frames a second. So if I'm doing so, it's gonna be five seconds to generate ten frames. Yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's like uh 48 or let's say 50 users a minute times 60 yeah. minutes. You're doing 3000 users an hour. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. The numbers have been asked. And you can, With duplicate, the that. You can duplicate that yeah. by adding a, a small queue. Like, we are queue. replicating multi-region and then we are queuing the things up and low balancing. So, but, but so, so we saying, have like, the same instance everywhere. But if you had 3,000 users an hour spread over like five hours a day, if it was only five hours a day of peak time, right? That's 15,000. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, let's go 10 hours a day. So you got 30,000 users um, a day. We can serve them. Times, let's say, 20 days. And you've got 200,000 200, <laughs> users a month generating $600,000. And it's only costing you $1,750 for your server time. Right. So your challenge yeah, is yeah. to get the user. Your challenge isn't to make this a, optimize a... user and, and co compute cost. No, no. But I mean, honestly, like getting that number of users is a challenge. So your real challenge right yeah. now is getting the word out so people try it and getting the user We're experience. Do us. And you got to get the user experience locked down so they're going to like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. You're just you're describing. I think you're describing the normal lifetime of a uh, of, of business. Like, for example, I don't know. Imagine Dropbox. I can here. do I can do a Dropbox in I can call a Dropbox in five hours like optimistically for like for an, a startup with a couple users I mean not Dropbox obviously that's not feasible <laughs> anywhere near but getting that amount of users is always hard because yeah doing a, a Dropbox is I can code some stuff in, in Lambda and maybe get an S3 on AWS and I'm done that's my Dropbox with the login box of Google. Okay. Yeah, uh, so I want to just really quick. You you your website is just.pics. Yeah, just. Yes. Yeah. So there, there's going to be a link to that in the description below. So people want to check it out. Now, is it something people can use today? Yeah, they can uh, join the reservation list. Okay, and it's it's best to use Chrome, not Safari, <laughs> right? As of, <laughs> by the time this goes live, he should have fixed it. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and then is it <laughs> is it something I'm using primarily on a phone? Am I using it primarily on a computer? Is it both? Anyway, okay. It's so designed for both, yeah. When do you expect this to be up and running well? I don't oh, know. Well, yeah, it's a little bit hard to break, but I can say in a window between one or two weeks. Okay. So is that Elon time yeah. or is that <laughs> well, well, well or it's little... been <laughs> Yeah, we can give you context. It's been a week since we started working on the startup and we're here. Okay. So yeah, like we, we all, like we're really fast. To to be okay. honest, uh, I, the, 
I'm really transparent. The the only stuff missing right now it's the back end to integrate Stripe. The Stripe, sorry. To be honest, the payment. <laughs> like, like, yeah, that that's all. That's all. Yeah. And obviously, the 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 extra features. Sorry, for example, cloud storage, or uh, maybe the editor, all, all those things. Hasn't been built, but it's not difficult. Yeah, that, that's that's extra because it's not like the main product. That's something extra we want to offer. And and to be honest, I don't expect you to maybe buy the largest package right now because maybe it's not. Uh, it's not something you want to get at this point, but it's something you will want to get after we finish all this yep. cool stuff. Because it's... you mentioned Stripe, my audience is going to want to know: Are you going to accept Dogecoin? Yes. Yeah. Well. Gonna... Well. Yeah. It, the the backend it's agnostic to which provider we use. Yeah. Obviously, we'll we'll accept. It's that. a number to us. Well, no, I mean, yeah. I think I think Stripe, like the transaction cost with Stripe is probably pretty high for a three dollar transaction. If you can get people paying in Dogecoin as, a, instead, you're <laughs> your transaction costs are gonna be lower, right? Yeah, you'll make a great point. Yeah, it increases yeah, our yeah. margins. About fifty percent would be actually. And yeah, actually, like an extra thing there. It's like maybe I'm not sure. I just want to say, like maybe we can we could even over a discount by paying on those right. peer to peer networks because I'm planning. Well, we're planning to maybe develop our own provider, so we we don't need to pay anyone. So it's peer to peer. Yeah, peer. we have fees. Well, what we're doing is that we're grabbing everything that's out there, anything that's open, open source, or anything that we have to pay out license for, and over the course of two years, try to build everything in house. Do you do you see yourselves getting to a point where you would need to raise funds to build this out, or is it more like you expected to generate enough cash early on that that you would never need to raise funds? We um, don't need to raise funds, but we are going to have a round soon. Yeah, I think it's more like by time, because for example, if I want to. I already have like other jobs to do and of that. So right now I just need to split my time in half. So I, I need to develop like this amazing stuff we um between like the thing that gives me something to eat. <laughs> so right. maybe that's just that's just a question. Well, I right. think one of the reasons you would raise funds is because if you want people to know you exist, you have to reach them. And that probably costs money to get the word out that, hey, I mean, if you can get the app and you if you got like one celebrity to say, hey, look what I did here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, my, but there's my this girlfriend challenge about... is a Twitch streamer. What's that? My girlfriend is a Twitch streamer. So how big I is her audience? I don't know, like half a mil, something like that. Okay. Sure. So are you going to pay her to help with this, or is she going to do it for free? Come on, I'm taking her out. <laughs> She's going to do it for <laughs> She's going to get an owner. Is she going to get an ownership interest in the business? No, she's going to get a you know, missing dinner. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, I think I think that I just think that like if you want to grow to a billion users, right, or if you want to grow to even a million users, Warren, yes, we are going to raise funds. Uh, we're working on it. <laughs> okay. No, because it's I'm because I'm you know I'm trying to raise I'm I'm planning on raising funds for this and it's not necessarily that easy. There's there's easy ways and there's hard ways and and um I think it's fairly straightforward to be honest. I mean electric vehicles are fairly simple. You can get a product going in a year if you have funding. No, the the point no. is how do you get the funding? Yeah, I'm saying getting exactly, the fund yeah. getting the okay. funding isn't necessarily easy. We have contacts, so we're working on it. We are pretty well connected. Okay. I mean, it's pretty interesting. I, I, I love the, the, what I love is I've got two um, engineer, software engineers, one guy in Mexico, one guy in Orlando who just said, Hey, let's do this. And a week later you have, a, you have a, in a few weeks later, you have a working product in a business. And that's, that's yeah, the modern billion, world. Right? A billion dollar, it's a billion dollar startup. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a potential, you can see the, the path to it being a very valuable startup. And it's it's a combination of <laughs> we have we have people who with, with a lot of skills, right? And you you guys are not there's lots of software engineers who are roughly as skilled as you are in the world, right? Yeah. But somehow you it's That's sort you. of like stumbling on an idea and talking it through and saying, hey, let's get going with this. And then you 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 find some time and and ha you know, unfortunately you miss some time with your girlfriend and you miss some time with your you know <laughs> maybe you take a little time off of work and you you because I'm sure too much for him. What's and maybe you missed some video game time or whatever, and you hacked this together. Um, it's I think we're heading towards a world, or we're already in a world where this a lot of this is happening. A lot of like one, two, three person teams are putting together 
some cool software idea and getting it going. And, you know, there's a really strong chance you can, there's a, some chance you can make this work and it takes off. And there's also some chance that it just fizzles, right? This Because there's, there's tons of things like this happening all the time, right? And some of them get somewhere and some of them don't, right? But I just think it's amazing yeah. that you guys have, have put together what sounds like something really cool in such a short time. Um, and you have well, pretty big ideas. Well, I haven't slept much. Yeah, that's a good sign. So I can I can I can give you a timeline if you want. So um, on Tuesday after work, I'm um, sorry, Monday after work, like two a.m. I was showering. I had a thought. I was like, hmm, what if we use civil diffusion to generate portraits? And what if we do it for half of what our custom our competitors are doing? It which is which is photo shoot. Yeah. I was like, hey, Richie, can we do this? And when we start working on the infra, uh, by uh, well, by well I, we he said. Line. He said that to me, and I just finished the front and then like one day. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, like, then I, I, we got the, the day for going, uh, and then we just recently got the model on. No, because like just for example, like I have an idea that I don't think would work on stable diffusion, at least not alone. And I don't think stable diffusion would do this at all, but I'm trying to patent this. I'm thinking about patenting this and yeah, patenting you can something know. else. And like, could you get an AI to do patent searching for you? And could you get an AI to do patent yes. drafting for you? Right. And, yes. and and what I found is when I tried to generate images and I gave specifications like 40 feet long, 24 feet high, the roof is 46 feet long. This is the angle. Stable diffusion, my mid journey and Dolly all choked on that. They, they, they're not able to do something to specifications. It doesn't. Well, matter. that's. That's because the models you're running are like either free or really cheap uh, instances. So you're, you're, the GP is struggling on resources. If you have more compute time available, uh, the outputs are actually really good. Yeah. So if you click here, this level that you're going to see is Dali actually. But yeah. I mean, it's simple, but it's still, I mean, technically you could do it on stable diff. But yeah, okay. this is how you pay, by the way. Right. Yeah, but the point is that you can. It's doable. It's definitely doable. But we need to do a specific sub sub uh data set with train with patents, so we we will have to serialize a bunch of PDFs. But, sorry, I I didn't want to. I wanted to talk about something else. I'm going to take this off the screen. Um, yeah, yeah, take it off. What what I'm talking about is you guys came up with this idea, and you coded it in a fairly short time, and you you're you're almost done with like the basic basic version of it, and almost ready to go to customers and potentially get a large, a large customer base quickly. And I'm just saying like, just an idea I had, like I get, you know, a few coders and I, I realized that the, um, the challenge of getting the right compute and getting the right, because the thing is the patent data set's already there, right? That there's a public data set. You just, data. you just scrape all the patent data and then you can train it on that, on that data. And then you give it your own. Um, I, I'm not saying it's easy, but I think, you know, working with the right or we, that's, and then i think there's probably my point isn't that's not the idea i'm just saying there's probably a thousand ideas or ten thousand or a hundred thousand ideas out there and people are working on all kinds of things and i think that's one of the wonderful things about the world we're in is that there's all this opportunity and the cost of compute has gotten so low and the opportunities are so great that this is fantastic i mean do you guys see how cool this is that you're you were able to pull this right. together in such a short time and so many other people could do so many other things like this Right. That's the idea of the project I want to add that we, we that's the idea of the pro plan. We want to provide everything that we built and as fast as we built it, available to absolutely everyone, every developer out there, uh via an API call and monetize that way. Uh right. but you also need to buy pay, pay for the plan. But yeah, that's the idea. Uh, the, it, what you said it, it can definitely be done. We can have a post endpoint to upload you data a specific data set and then get outputs from that sub data. It's pretty easy. We can do it on gRPC. Right. So then yeah, I mean, just, just sort of moving forward, like what I what I what I wanted to talk about now is you guys have this startup. I, I see the world like what I've seen in the tech world, because I go back, I'm a little bit older than you guys, I think. I go back to yeah. when the I when the, the Macintosh came out, there were these early like computers. There was the um the Macintosh and there was the, the early IBM PCs. And um somewhere along the way, somebody created a spreadsheet. Right. It was called VisiCalc was the original spreadsheet. And and VisiCalc like was predates like uh there was Lotus one, two, three, and then there was Microsoft Excel. And 
that was known that the spreadsheet became the killer app. It was like the thing that really made the personal computer take off because it was very useful. And then you ended up with word processors. So the hardware created a wave of software that rolled off, yeah. this, rolled off the, 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 there's this big wave of, Hey, there's this really cool hardware. Let's spin off a whole bunch of businesses that run off of that. And there's been a whole bunch yeah. of other things that have happened along the way. Like Google comes along, right? And there was search before, but Google sort of really nailed search. And then you end up with this whole business of search engine optimization and search engine marketing. And then social media comes along. And then you end up with social media marketing and so all, all these things that you can build off social media. And I, I built businesses. I built uh, two businesses off Google search engine optimization, basically. I built one business off uh, Facebook social media. And and I'm like a nobody, right? I, I you know I created exactly. a couple, I created a few businesses that were successful in that world, and I'm not even a coder. I mean, I wrote HTML, and I can read. <laughs> I hired people to code in PHP, and I can read PHP, right? But I'm not really a coder. And and then you get people with real skills like you guys, and then I just see that. So we have this large language model thing, which is what I want to get to this large language model thing where you have the visible things that people are seeing are chat GPT, stable diffusion, mid journey, Dolly. Maybe there's a few others that are Lenza that are starting to catch attention, but the large language model itself is sort of like this monster wave that's going to cast yeah. me through the economy and society and people yeah. like you, like I'm not, I don't think that I'm competent to do what you're doing, but people like you are going to say, "Hey, there's going to be a, a thousand uh, teams like you, if not more than that, uh, coming I, up I, with how can we spin something off on this large language model thing and build something and generate a business, and it's going to cascade through the economy in a matter of a few years, and there's going to be all this new innovation. Does, might, do, does it sound right? Yeah, yeah. I I, I want to put here like what Elon Musk said once, like. We are already sort of cyborgs because we use all these machines as, as extensions of, of ourselves. Like, for example, cell phones, computers, uh, internet, whatever, and even all this, all this stuff is something we we use on on our day. Like, I for example, am, am I in living your home w without the phone? That, that that's something like it's like you live something that believes to your body. I don't know. That's something I think on on twenty on twenty twenty three, it's something you can think of, and it's similar to all these. Maybe it's a little bit complex because it's new technology, but I think that's a question. This this is the same question someone did when the first phone went to the market, in my opinion. So let me ask you this: um, I I see this wave with the large language models. Um, can you explain to the audience? <laughs> what a large language model is and how it does what it does with images. Okay. Um, we're going to go into the... Into I mean, there's, the, is this linear algebra? Without going into linear algebra, right? Because you can get into linear algebra, right? I don't even know. Do you guys have to deal with linear algebra? Is this PyTorch? What, what, what are you coding in? PyTorch. Okay. And so PyTorch, tell the audience what PyTorch is because it sounds like it's Python and something else. Python is a coding yeah. language. And I did. I, okay, did, yeah, I, I so, did actually take a class in Python, by the way. So, so the way you actually build neural net, uh, the community has sort of, the market has sort of found uh, Python as the idea of programming language for it because of the easy re uh, readability and shareability of it, of the code of the programming language, and it's actually gotten performant lately. lately. Uh, and the few issues with Python, it's actually that it's actually not that performant because it's interpreted, but uh, sorry, people- Not, not that performant, meaning it's not that fast. Not that fast, yeah. Right, it's okay. But people decided to start doing bindings in other programming languages like C and Rust and just call it from the front end on Python. And that actually made it such that uh, things like TensorFlow on JavaScript and PyTorch uh, on Python uh, kind of took off. The, those are libraries, I believe my Meta and Google. Uh, uh, yeah. And those libraries are pretty much uh, like a standard tool set of uh, operations that you perform uh, whenever you're working with neural networks. So you're talking about convolutions, backpropagation. Uh, it's mostly dot products. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're just multiply matrices. But, but at your level, at the coding level for a software engineer creating something like this, it's a method. You're not you're not going down to the linear algebra, the dot products, right? You're you're using the libraries, you're using uh, software tools, and 
the right. software tools are at some level, there's, there's some linear algebra, some, some dot products or whatever going on, but at your level, at the level of the guys who are riding the wave, like the people who are creating the wave of large language models might have to get down to dot products, but the people who are yeah. riding the wave of using large language models don't have to get down to the level of, of linear algebra. You're just using programming tools to make it work. Right. Yeah, right. If you want to have some more context on, on how this works, there's a great paper by Google, uh, I believe 2019. It's called Attention is All You Need. It's a great paper. It explains how all this transformer uh, and then the large language model uh, architecture of neural networks work. And it's pretty fascinating that we have this it, thing. Carpathy talks about this all the time. It's amazing. It, uh, also, just to complement the idea, I think a good comparison of what you're talking about is how you use Excel on these days. Like you're not coding like on low level, you're writing just like take the cell and add, add it with this other cell. And if this if the output is more than five, um, pen it green, something like that. Like, or, or maybe even the formulas in school, you're not trying to do what uh, Galileo Galilei did and, or Newton to find them. And you're just like changing numbers, the letter for numbers. That's basically what is happening here. I mean, I think it's it's, it's still more complicated than it sounds maybe with these comparisons, but it's a whole completely different story than trying to figure out all that yourself. Do you guys both have computer science degrees? How, how did you, what was your education before you got into this? Richie, what's yours? Uh, I'm completely self-taught since eight. Since the age of eight. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. Juan, what about you? I thought since 13, uh, uh, I took some computer science, like college classes during uh, high school, senior year. Then I did uh, an associate's in, in, in uh, UCF on computer science and I dropped out. So it was just love for me. Okay. So if somebody wants to get into this industry to start learning how to do what you guys are doing, I mean, is it like you go to a boot camp or you just, uh, I mean, and you guys oh. didn't do a boot camp, but somebody could do a yeah, boot camp. Yeah. I now think you have works... ChatGPT. What's that? <laughs> I think it works different for everyone. Yeah, in my opinion, you, uh, everyone has different ways to, to learn. So some people like books. Some people like school. I, I know people who really like school. For example, I hate school. <laughs> but some people love it. It, it, it works for them, and, and that's great. But the way I did it was just I, uh, I have, like, an idea. I started coding in Minecraft, and I just said, I want you to do something cool with this game. And I Googled that, like how I can modify uh, Minecraft. And I start. I saw you can use the well. That's the how I did it too, actually. Or, or so, sorry, you, you both then, start, Hold on, you both started with Minecraft. Yeah, yeah. This well, is one of those my, things that, like, I think people totally don't appreciate this. How people think Minecraft was just a game, and, and it's Minecraft a number one actually, most sold game. No, no, but it's it's, it's the but, but Minecraft ended up being a tool that ended up teaching a whole a large number of people how to code and do something meaningful. Because yeah. I have two That's kids dumb. and they both played Minecraft and I was like, hey, let's get into this. I tried to get them more into like um, hacking Minecraft and I couldn't so, get them to take that next step. So we're well, working on that actually as a future product. The idea I show you, coder.jaws.pix. Uh, it's a, uh, we're trying to make it so that you have an IDE that also teaches you how to code and you have GitHub Copilot or completions. Uh, we have, uh, this is a really long, like two year mod, uh, probably business, uh, but we're working on it. All right. So can you explain to the audience what, what is a large language model? What does that mean? <laughs> it's words. exactly what it says. Like it's a large language model. It's a big data set of, of stuff. So a data set is a set of data, surprise, surprise, uh, label and not labeled data. Labeled data, it's uh, basically, so you have a dog uh, and you know it's a, it's, a, it's a whatever breed, a German Shepherd. So you put in your data and your record, uh, dog number one, German Shepherd. That's your labeled data. And then you have unlabeled data, which is a bunch of pictures that you take from strangers on the internet. Uh, when you have unlabeled data, you usually try to to run it through some sort of models in order in order to label it automatically as much as you can, and then have some man manual inter inter intervention. But ideally, you don't actually do that. There, are, there's a, a neural network architecture called called generative adversarial networks that are pretty great for this. They help you to in almost real time uh, do certain tasks. The way it works is that it has one neural network that does one, uh, one job and another neural network that checks that job. If this checker 
uh, says that the output is bad, uh, then the the output uh, the weights change. If the if the validator doesn't detect that it's a fake, the weights here change, and that uh, it it does some uh, self self learning I think experiments, and it's pretty great because uh, it, it allows us to leverage real time uh, queries on on the on really, really big data sets. So going back to large language models, uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a big dictionary of all the text on the internet. Okay, so when we look at this world of large language models, we're seeing some amazing, uh, I mean, some people don't get it. I think I do get it. I think this is what I what I generated like very quickly. I think this was amazing. I think a lot of chat GPT output, is, some, some chat GPT output is stupid. Sometimes you generate images with something like stable diffusion, you don't get what you want. But a lot of times you come up with some really cool results. So we're heading towards a world where it seems like large language models might just be the start and we're heading towards a world where AI is able to do more and more. When right. do we get to the point where AI is able to do what you're doing and you become irrelevant? Right, so this has started in 2021, when, no, 2020 when GitHub Copilot came out. People started wondering, uh, when are we gonna get replaced? And in fact, what GitHub Copilot did was that it took me from a 10X developer to a 100X developer. So that's how we're gonna see AI uh enter our, our tools and, and, and things help with automation with the boring stuff with the boilerplate it makes it it's makes a coder like you, take our it, jobs away. it makes a coder like you more productive exactly but yeah, i we... think it get it gets rid of all the all this stuff that takes too much time to do but the the, the ias are in machines that can do a lot of stuff they are designed just for once or one specific thing so it's difficult to replace a human because when you're coding at least you're thinking of other of things it's not just like what goes next in this code you're thinking on the complete infrastructure you're you're on the end user on what it is running on where in the world a lot of stuff so it might take a little bit of time do you think we're heading towards a world where at some level we reach artificial general intelligence and then artificial super intelligence and it leaves us behind or it it kill it destroys us or it takes us along for the ride do you see that future coming or you don't really spend much time thinking about it it probably takes uh, us it, along for the ride in, in my, myself i haven't thought about that but you're describing something called transhumanism it's basically just a philosophy that talks about that, like what happens after humans. Because when you reach that point in, in the history of the human, you're not even thinking what happens on the human itself. It's what did the human did and how it helps the human or how it changed the, their life. Because if the human stopped doing stuff, then how you can describe a human? Well, all these questions are more philosophical, more more like... <laughs> well, the... they used to be philosophical. Now we're looking at like, this might be 10 years from now, or less. Yeah, it's not that far. It's not that far. That's artificial really important yeah, to it was know. Just by, by the way, if, if for for the audience, there's a series of novels by an author called Ian Banks. It's known as the Culture series, and it's one of Elon Musk's favorite uh, works of fiction. And it's 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 not like book one, book two, book three, and they all follow each other. They're just all different uh, stories that are in the same uh, setting, but they're, they're, the stories aren't connected. Um, but it's a world where the the AI became super intelligent some long time before the, all these stories took place. And there's these like incredibly super intelligent AIs that are like flying around the universe in these incredibly large ships with billions of people. And there's this question, there's this, um, there's a blogger named Tim Urban who has a blog called Wait But Why. And he talks about the future of artificial intelligence, the, the early days of artificial intelligence and where it's going. And there's this notion that at some point, we're going to have an artificial and general intelligence that's as smart as a mouse. And then a year later, it's going to be as smart as a dog. And then a year later, it's going to be as smart as a monkey. And at some point, it's going to be as smart as a human. And the day after that, it's going to be smarter than human. And there's this moment where there's this concern that people have that there's this moment where artificial general intelligence becomes um, smarter than human, more capable than human. And it starts to look at us, at humans, and say are they a threat or are they a pet? And if the artificial general intelligence gets smarter than us and decides we're a threat, it kills us all. And if it decides we're a pet, it takes us along for the ride. And so we, we want the artificial intelligence to know we're friendly, we love you, we want to help you, and we don't want to hurt you. Hey, I built you. 
And and then no, we don't no, we don't want to say that. We, we don't want to say that because there's the Oedipus complex and it might decide to kill us because we're in the way. We want it to know that we're we're here, we're supportive, we're not in your way. And there's a moment where it's like somewhat smarter than us and we're still potentially a threat. And then there's a moment where it's so much smarter than us that doesn't even when it doesn't even notice we exist anymore. I think we yeah. first need to define what what does a threat mean. Because, for example, if the AI is designed to optimize everything to the maximum point, obviously we are, because humans are not perfect. We are not like machines that can reach a 100% of productiveness or effectiveness or whatever you efficiency, whatever you want to call it. So obviously, in in, in that reality, we are a threat. We, I mean, we do poop. <laughs> we we need to sleep. You know, all all this stuff is something the machine won't do. A, a machine. In my mind, uh, an IA of that kind of that kind of AI can can find ways to to replace all that kind of efficiencies, and, and that's not something you can do with a human. Well, maybe you can convert them on a cyborg, but then you are not just like a human. Maybe you are now a Cyberman <laughs> from yeah. Doctor Who. I, I don't know. Well, you you, are... you can head to a world where we have Neuralink's implanted in our heads, right? You know, Elon's work. Yeah, exactly. that's definitely possible. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right. So, so uh, I think we've covered everything that we wanted to talk about. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? No. Yeah, I wanted to do a live demo. You want to do a demo? Yeah. Okay. Do the demo. You can talk while I set it up, Richie. Yeah, I I just, I just wanted to say, uh, like that last, uh, that that last piece of sentence remind me of cyberpunk a little bit. And sorry, yeah. of of Blade Blade Runner, sorry, Blade Runner, yeah, uh, Wall and some of the last movie. I almost feel like we need to start making movies and and novels that talk about how wonderfully humans cooperated with the AI when it became super intelligent, instead of making movies where we realize it's becoming super intelligent, we try to turn it off. We our fiction, our stories need to be about how I need to we need to stop making stories about how we're gonna fight it and start making stories about how we're gonna we're gonna help it and work yeah. with it and support it. Uh, because it's because it's gonna read everything we do, it's gonna watch everything we make. And if it sees our fiction and our stories and our stories are we attack it, then it's gonna decide we're a threat. So we need to start working yeah. now on spreading the stories that that we're happy to be with you and we're we're looking forward. I mean, I think the thing is that. I mean, yeah, exactly. some, is, is is it irrational to think that we are heading towards that world where it becomes super intelligent? Is it, it that that it will never attain general intelligence? I I look at humans and I'm like, are humans really general intelligence? Like, well, what? It, uh, <laughs> we don't really even I, I, know what general intelligence is. Yeah, I think all like all these movies come from a context, and I don't know something might be wrong with our context that makes us think that. But if we try to change how we're going forward that might change because yeah as you said all the movies are AI yes, is like they destroy us i, I mean look to terminator to look to I mean, they destroy uh, us or we destroy them oh yeah, yeah it's it's a fight like why we can live together well the problem is that our fiction depends on conflict right our the way we <laughs> the way we tell stories yeah. depends on conflict and we need to find a way of telling that story well, where the conflict isn't between us and the ai that we're working together with the ai to achieve some goal yeah, I I think that happens because we have we haven't got that like we haven't got like a real yeah. link with the AI until the last years. Like AI was something we used to dream, and it's coming to a reality right now. Yeah, Juan, are you ready yeah, to show us life. something? Hell yeah! So I have this prompt. I'll show it on my coder. Uh, it's the live prompt. A highly detailed, re- realistic creature life, properly lit with correct shadows, past three is portrait of Elon Musk with a cyber truck in the background. Full body posing dramatically with open helmet, injured from under a Martian cape containing Martian water, wearing a SpaceX uh, spacesuit, turned, uh, trending on large station 4K. And we give it a value of guidance of 6.6. Six. And let's see what it gives us. So again, it's all about the prompt. So it's almost done. You can see the number 56.4. Yeah. yeah, it goes over all the time. It's busy. So is that right? Okay. So, so we've yeah. got Elon Musk. So these are not so great. Yeah. Yeah. 
so you have to tweak it. I think this should be fine with seven nine. But yeah, you have to tweak it. But uh, I basically generated this uh, while we were talking, and I believe this one's very good. So do you wanna do you wanna see the other ones? I mean, I this and this. All three of these are pretty good in my opinion. And so the point is, if you have a large amount of compute, you can throw a bunch of different prompts in there, see what it comes up with. Where, When you do this, are you giving it feedback? No, this isn't what I wanted. Yes, this is what I wanted. Is it getting positive? You can. Yeah. You can, but not here. Because okay. this is just a running of hogging face. On my model, that uh, it's currently broken, running right here. Yeah. And you can uh, provide feedback. Here's, here's the whole model. And can you, can you, after it generates an image, say, you know, make it darker or can you give it some feedback to generate a next round of images? Yeah, actually, I know it's possible. Yeah. NVIDIA does it, does it, but currently a sale efficient doesn't support it, but we need to build it, but it's possible. NVIDIA does it. Yeah, NVIDIA I mean, and that, that's that's part of the idea of doing the editor. So you can upgrade your, your avatar in, in the time. Like, for example, you wanted today to be an astronaut at the moon, okay, so maybe the... Out. Maybe the next month at Mars and so on. All right. Well, I, I want to wrap this up. Let, let me, um, I'm going to disable the screen sharing. Go ahead. Um, so I want to, I want to thank you guys for, for chatting with me. Um, and I, before, before we wrap up, I have to say, please check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com and all that. But, um, <laughs> is there, is there anything you want to tell? Is there anything else you want to tell the audience? I mean, it's just dot P I C S and when should they expect this to be like super like like it's a couple of weeks away from being very useful yeah it's, yeah. it's just it's just a couple of weeks before we finish like right now it's just some tweaks on the model that's um one job sent me on the infrastructure basically that and, and just to be connect clear, in the user Juan, do you want to tell people your twitter handle because Juan and i know each other from twitter it's yeah, um the J C D no, so T H E J C E D E N O. Okay. And I'll I'll put a link to that in the I'll put that link to that in the description below. Ricardo, uh Richie, is there anywhere people should look for you? Are you on Twitter or are you on some other app or or you're, yeah, you're not, you don't need um, that yet? Yeah, I'm on, on Twitter. It's in Spanish, it's a little bit hard. <laughs> for you, can, you can send how about this? You'll send it to me or or or, or uh, Juan will send it to me and I'll I'll add it. Yeah, it's it's Tiendo uh, Ricardo. In Tiendo Ricardo. Warren. Okay. In Spanish. Does that mean feeling? Yeah. Warren, do you? It, it it means being Ricardo. That's all. Being okay. <laughs> like yeah. Do Do you mind if I share my screen one more go ahead, time? Go ahead. I upscale the image. I want to share the final output in however long it took us to wrap this up. Okay. This is the final output. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So I want I want to thank you guys for coming on. Um, it's just just.pics. Uh, please check it out. Uh, sign up and and uh, you'll get access to it once they're ready. Um, uh, for everyone else, just but really quick, please check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. Check out my other videos. Please support me on the locals platform on Patreon as a YouTube channel member. Like this video, share and subscribe. And thanks everybody so much for watching.